And welcome. I'm James Milan, and this is Town Meeting Matters, a brief series that we are doing uh, preparing town meeting members for the rather extraordinary gathering that's going to take place on June 15th, on which they're going to compress a lot of town meeting business uh, into one session. Um, I'm talking today with Sandy Pooler, our deputy town manager, who has uh, a better grasp of all of the numbers. Uh, that are going to be presented to and considered by town meeting members uh, on the 15th. Uh, Sandy is our expert. And so, Sandy, thanks very much for joining us. James, I'm glad to be here. You know, every year uh, we do get to visit you with you around this time, or usually a little earlier, right, because everything's been delayed. Um, and then we, we dive quite deep uh, into the weeds. Happily, I have to say, but uh, that's what we spend a lot of time doing. We're gonna be looking to do that with you again in a, in a kind of more concise fashion uh, this time. Um, and also though, get a, a sense of uh, not just what the budget numbers presented to town meeting for this year are gonna be and where they're coming from and what the changes are, uh, but also what the implications are over the next number of years. Sure. So let's let's start with fiscal 2021, though. Um, obviously, um, everybody's very aware of the uh, dramatic reduction or almost elimination of economic activity, uh, both in Arlington and, and in the state. Um, so tell us a little bit about what the, not a little bit, tell us what the implications are for the budget for this year, which had, I know, it already been you know already been scrutinized in its original form and now you've had to make make a bunch of changes so tell us about those well um our budget was based on uh, a state aid number that had come out of the governor's budget which he released in january we had a very significant increase in state aid particularly in our school aid at that time so um it had done a lot to um, eliminate our future year deficits, um, to put off the size of our anticipated override for FY24. Um, when the override passed last June, uh, we told voters we wouldn't have an override again until FY24. And then when the governor's budget came out, it really reduced the size of that override number. And then everything changed. Right, everything was looking good there for a while, sounds like. Everything was looking very good. Uh, so then with the uh, COVID virus and the impact on the economy, we've seen a couple of things. We've seen a slowdown in some of our own local revenues. There are certain things that we know have uh, decreased, such as um, our hotel motel tax and our meals taxes. Um, we've seen a little bit of decrease, although not significant in some other things like uh, other local receipts like building permits and, and other things like that. We've delayed the collection of our taxes, so that's slowed down a little bit, but still seems to be coming in uh, on a strong basis, so I'm not worried about our tax revenue. The big thing I am worried about is state aid. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation as to what the governor is going to do when, uh, and, the, and the legislature is going to do with a new state aid number. We've heard estimates anywhere from 10 to a 20% cut in the amount of state aid in the governor's budget. So th through a series of long range planning committee meetings and other internal staff meetings, we came up with a budget uh, that the Finance Committee eventually passed that's assuming a 15% cut in the state aid from, from what the governor's original numbers were. So that's what we've built in now. We're waiting to see what the legislature is going to do because um, they still haven't passed a budget for FY21. Uh, and uh, we don't know when they're going to pass that. So we're going to go into town meeting with our best guests and then we will have to come back 
for another town meeting in the fall uh, to make any adjustments at that time based on what the legislature finally does. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what do the numbers look like uh, for this year based on, as you said, a, uh, an assumption of about a 15% or a 15% reduction in the state aid we will be getting? Uh, how, how are you accounting uh, for that um, in FY 2020, I mean, FY 21? So we have reduced one, um, our state aid estimates across the board in all categories by 15%. Two, we have level funded our um, local receipts. Usually every year we increase that by $100,000, but we've level funded that. Which the just one, means you haven't increased it at all. Haven't increased it at all. The one area we did increase was uh, the estimate for how much we can take from the overlay reserve, the money that the assessors set aside to give um, rebates or tax breaks to people who file and access, successfully earn an abatement. That has been for many years, $200,000. Uh, the Long Range Planning Committee looked at that, looked at how much money the assessors have set aside over the years and uh, agreed that a $400,000 revenue source would be more appropriate. So that has helped us a little bit. Um, and then I'll talk about spending cuts in a minute, but I do want to say with that 15% cut in state aid, that affects not only this current year, but every year going forward because it's built into a base and that base would grow over the years. And then when you collapse the base, that growth has to come down. So it, it affects all of our future budgets as well as this year's. Right, and certainly after we talk about FY 2021, um, we, will, we do wanna talk about what you've just said, the effect on the future budgets, and I'm sure you'll show us um, as well, because I know you've got some, some documents there that are gonna kind of help illustrate what you're saying. Sure. Um, in fact, I would think at this point, what I might do is just put up on the screen some document, a document about FY21. That'd be great. All right. Um, so this is Appendix E, the last page of the Finance Committee report. And it shows a series um, of budget moves that we Excuse me. Let me just interject. Um, Town meeting members probably know this already, but the Finance Committee report can be accessed easily on the uh, town's website, of course. That's right. <coughs> um, it is up on the website. The printed copies will be mailed to people. Finance Committee is printing those now, and, and if they haven't already sent them out, they will soon. Um, so, but I would very much encourage people to go online and look at this document. Um, so, <coughs> Pardon me. Um, we have uh, cuts in several areas here. Um, this first part, the top part, are cuts that we have made to the town side budget. And essentially what we've done is we've taken five new positions that we were going to add and we've taken them out of the budget. Um, so we were going to add a, um, a new person in the town manager's office. And by the way, if you're looking at the details in the finance committee report under appendix B, B as in boy, the town manager budget is section three, which you can see over here. So we eliminated a new position that we had added to help deal with all of the public records requests that we've had, which have really grown tremendously in the last couple of years since the legislature changed the public records law. Mm -hmm. Second, we have two positions that are in the Department of Public Works. Uh, those are in uh, sections 17A and B. They are for a, um, a systems innovation manager, somebody who is gonna help the DPW uh, set up more online and computer systems to manage their data and manage their workload. We also had a new permits engineer 
<coughs> pardon me, that was going to help DPW and engineering uh, process uh, various projects uh, and help with uh, particularly um, some of the projects we were getting from some state aid numbers, some uh, which we think now we're less likely to be able to do, so we cut that out. We're going to add a new police officer and add a second school resource officer to the police department. We've cut that back. And in the library in section 23, um, we eliminated a clerical person in the library director's office. Um, so those all added up to $261,000. Um, on the school side, um, let me just um, interrupt you for a second there, Sandy. So I can see uh, right there at the top uh, in bold where it says town manager and the original increase was a million two hundred thousand. So um, I, I assume that that's what the budget was going to be increased by and that that is now going to be reduced by the two hundred sixty one uh, eight forty seven figure there. Um, so there's still going to be an increase in the budget. It's just going to be a smaller increase than people than, than was in the original budget. That's exactly right. Uh, we are still growing. Uh, we still have property tax increases under Prop Two and a Half that have uh, are built into the budget, and um, so we're still growing the budget, which we need to do every year to maintain our. Uh, our services. So uh, this is pretty much a level service budget on the town side, not uh, a lot of big increases. Uh, there's some things we have to fund as an increase. Our trash contract, for example, is going up. We have contracts with all of our union employees, who uh, probably 85% of our employees are unionized. So yes, there are increases. Uh, and we are not cutting staff at this point. We have not uh, done any layoffs in this budget um, and will not uh, as long as our revenue estimates stay solid. All right. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. You were you were going to go on, I guess, to the school department. So the school department, uh, under the direction of the Long Range Planning Committee, uh, instituted uh, recommendations for a 10% cut in the, the growth of its budget. So it was going to grow um, $4.6 million, so they cut $460,000 out of their budget. So one administrative position, uh, they have cut out some of the teacher and professional additions that they were going to uh, add on and a small reduction in other expenses. Um, they have not, uh, they are working out some of the specifics of which those positions and how that affects as people might get bumped or not added. Um, so we will hear more about that at town meeting, but they did meet the 10% request for cuts that the Long Range Planning Committee asked them to do. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we did a number of smaller cuts just from warrant articles. Um, there was a, a $30,000 line item for well, you know what, Andy, that was cut. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in and just say, that looks like small potatoes, and just because we have so much ground to cover, let, let's let's go ahead and keep moving. Um, sure. Um, a couple of other bigger things that we did: uh, we always set one percent aside in the budget for a reserve fund, which is the reserve that the finance committee can use at the end of the year to replenish accounts, particularly if we have a bad snow and ice year. We cut that by ten percent. Uh, we usually every year put $100,000 into the long-term stabilization fund. We are not doing that this year. As I mentioned before, we increased how much uh, we are taking from overlay surplus as a revenue source. And as opposed to the budget that we had in January, where we were going to put money into the override stabilization fund, now we have to take $2 million out of the override stabilization fund. So all that adds up to $3.2 million in changes from all of these sources. Keeps our budget in balance and um, very importantly, make sure that we still do not have to have an override before FY 2024. That was one of the major policy decisions that all of us agreed uh, 
was the promise we had made to the voters and that we needed to keep. Excellent. So, um, given that this looks like, um, you know, a, a, uh, an accurate depiction of where the uh, budget savings are going to be coming from, um, I have to say that it doesn't look as apocalyptic as uh, people might have been expecting, at least not yet, right? Not for next year's budget. You uh, guys have figured out how to, again, it's, it's not great news, it can't be, uh, but you figured out how to do this without too much palpable pain, it seems like, for Arlington's residents. Um, may not notice uh, the changes much at all. Um, but, of course, uh, no doubt we will be paying uh, the price uh, further down the line, especially as you mentioned earlier with the fact that the 15%, if it comes out around there, whatever the reduction is in state aid, that is going to continue to permeate our budgets uh, for the foreseeable future, right? That's absolutely right. Um, so we've made our best estimate. Um, I think you're right. I think the, the public will see a continuation of services um, and we will have to reevaluate once we get the final numbers from the legislature to see if more cuts or rearranging how we do things is going to be necessary. Uh, we're all waiting with our fingers crossed to see what those numbers are going to be. Absolutely. All right. So tell us what the, the story is over the next uh, several years then. So I'm going to go to another document here. Um, this is um, section Appendix D in the Finance Committee report. Um, it's our long range plan and it is um, it's really an embodiment of something that's happened here in the town for uh, many years now where we have a long-range planning committee that's made up of select board, finance committee, school committee, town manager, school superintendent, and other staff that come together on a regular basis to discuss what our budget needs are. And we do a five-year plan. Um, this column here is the FY21 budget, so this is what we're going into. Um, we're having a uh, $5.8 million increase in that budget. It's about a 3.4% increase. We have these zeros on this balance number, which shows we have a balanced budget that revenues at the top match ongoing expenses at the bottom. So in FY21, 22, and 23, we have balanced budgets. FY24 then becomes the year that it looks like we would have to have a, another override, uh, which was all part of the plan that we had for last summer's vote. Um, that number now is at $17.6 million. Again, when the governor's budget came out, that number was $3.5 million. <laughs> the deficit has, has really gone way back up um, in FY24. So it's, so a, it's a big that, challenge for us. Yeah. Um, I think that's a big number. We would certainly like to see that number come down. Um, I'm hoping that we will see a recovery in state aid in the next few years, particularly because Arlington is one of those communities that has had ever expanding school enrollment. And a lot of our state aid is based on the number of kids we have coming into the school system um we and that is one of the reasons we had a two million dollar boost originally in state aid um in fy21 instead of our 1.4 million dollar decrease as is in the plan now so um i hope at some point that flips around we'll watch it carefully but if it doesn't we're really going to have to come to grips with what to do about our budget in fy24 mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, that is a, can you, people may just be curious, and I don't know if there's a short, you know, if there's a succinct way of explaining this, 
but even to my mind, you said that that looked like on the original budget for this year before the, before everything cratered, um, three and a half million. And now that's up to 17 something, 17 and a half. Six, yeah. So that looks like a five, that's been increased by five times. That seems extremely dramatic. Um, can you tell us, is there any short way of explaining how how it could be so you know kind of yes. so much it really all has to do with this state aid line which had originally been a two million dollar bump up and now is a 1.4 million dollar bump down and so losing that two million dollars plus essentially losing another 1.4 every year essentially adds up to the difference that $14 million difference in this line here. Um, again, I hope at some point we see a rebound in that state aid number. Uh, we should if, if the state economy turns around. But that is right now the big question for us. When will state revenues turn around so that they have enough funds to fund state aid at the level we expect it? Right. Uh, All right. Great. So um, it does seem then that what this encapsulates right at the moment is in some, uh, at least arguably, a kind of worst case scenario, or at least a bad case scenario, in terms of it is assuming that there is no change on the state aid side, while we can reasonably hope, as well as perhaps even assume, that there will be some change because this, the, the, the situation would have to continue to be very bad at a state level for a, a long time for that not to change. That's correct. So we're keeping our eye on it. Mm -hmm. um, so one way or the other though, um, we can assume that our audience for, for this presentation and in general um, uh, uh, need to understand that there will be this reckoning of some sort in fiscal year 2024. There always was going to be, uh, according to the plans, um, but it could be a significantly uh, greater hit than we had anticipated. That's right. And, and I mean, we know really our budget is very much driven by large increases in school enrollment in the last few years. Uh, which is both good news and bad news. Financially, it's a difficult decision. But on the good side, it means that we have a very good school system and people keep moving to town to go to that, that school system. We are one of the fastest growing, if not the fastest growing school district in the state now. And um, so it shows we, we in the school department are putting out a good education system and um, so that's a positive thing, I think. Um, it just means it costs a lot of money to grow it every year. All right, well, thank you um, so much for kind of taking us through what things look like um, uh, for fiscal year 2021, especially on the town budgets side. Um, is there any other business to be conducted on the 15th that people need uh, to be aware of information that we haven't yet shared with them? Well, first I would say, if people have more questions, the moderator, John Leone, has uh, set up a, a system. He sent a letter to all town meeting members saying they can and should forward any questions they have to him uh, by Thursday so that the staff can answer them and get those answers out to people. And I would very much encourage people to do that. We do have a full financial agenda where we have the operating budget, the capital budget, and other kind of related financial issues like authorizing bonding and so forth that we really have to get voted on in order to go into FY21 so that we can keep the government running. Hey, so uh, I would Andy, encourage can you I to ask you, sorry, just sorry to interrupt. Can I ask you just to, um, we can take the document off of the screen now. Um, and focus just on our, our lovely faces. All right, great, yeah. thank you. Sure. Sorry, carry on. So we need to pass a budget by June 30th in order to keep the government running. Um, and 
as I said, the, the major elements are the operating budget, uh, the capital budget, bonding, uh, our Minuteman assessment, uh, and other related financial issues. Uh, so I would encourage people to look at the Finance Committee report. It's well done. Um, each department's budget is laid out in Appendix B, uh, page by page. They're all summarized on Appendix C, which shows where the money is coming from and where the money is going. Um, and uh, I don't think it's going to be a controversial conversation. I've seen in the last few years that the budget is actually, I think, the least controversial part of town <laughs> meeting in the last few years. Congratulations. So I hope that continues to be the case. <laughs> um, and um, and I, I think, you know, people like the services that we've been able to provide here in Arlington. We try to continue those services and passing a budget will allow us to do that. Okay, and one last uh, question that people may be interested in, in knowing. You uh, mentioned that fiscal year 2021's budget includes no job cuts. Um, assuming, I mean, I know that there's a range of scenarios going forward, depending again on the amount of state aid, what happens with our own tax revenues, et cetera. Um, is there, from what you can tell, uh, you know, how, how much concern might there be uh, that some jobs are going to need to be eliminated at some point? The scenario right now does not show our need to do that. If the state aid cuts were much more serious, and particularly if that meant pushing an override earlier by our projections, at that point we would really have to look at all of our spending and come up with some um, scenarios for reducing that, which might involve uh, job cuts. Uh, I think we would certainly try to avoid job cuts. We would first look at eliminating positions through attrition, not filling vacancies, uh, and things like that, uh, both because of the impact on people, we don't want to lay them off, and because, frankly, we have to then pick up a lot of costs like uh, unemployment insurance if we lay people off. So uh, we do try to look at that all together as a package and um, avoid it if possible. Yeah. And it does sound from what you just laid out, I don't want to, I'm not trying to back you in a corner or anything like that, but um, it does sound like the possibility of a, a given town employee, a teacher or whatever, losing his or her job in, in this next while is relatively remote. Um, I hope so. As of today, I would say yes, <laughs> there it, it is remote. Yes. <laughs> Again, so yeah, not, not, not trying to nail you down on that. Nobody knows, of course, but um, it's not an imminent concern at the moment. There seems like that, that, that's correct. a lot of other things first. There are other towns who have started layoffs. Um, we are in a fortunate enough position because of our long range plan and because we had an override last year not to be in that position. And uh, hopefully we can stay in that position. All right. Well, it's been bad timing for a lot of things. It sure was good timing retrospectively for the override, as it turns out. So uh, that, that was done last year or so. All right. Sandy Pooler, Deputy Town Manager, thank you so much um, for really elucidating a lot of what is on these, uh, you know, these, these documents that are filled with numbers, you've kind of distilled down to the, the ones that matter the most. So we appreciate your time. We hope that, uh, and think that our audience will find it helpful. Thank you, James. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, and you too. And we look forward to doing so under normal circumstances again at some point soon. Um, I'm James Milan. I have been talking to Deputy Town Manager Sandy Pooler. This is Town Meeting Matters, and thanks for joining us.